Uh, and when we have tribulation, when there's difficulty, what uh, the the um, uh, what what to note is it's all about God's grace is what is really how we uh, can get get through this. And so we're gonna just I want to start off with one verse. Because sometimes when I'm reading, certain verses pop into my you know the sort of this sort of stand out to me. And I just just one of these verses like. Uh, you want to memorize it, or you want to have it in the, uh, you know, at 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 hand sometimes uh, when you just need that uh, comfort. Uh, this is in um, the Song of Moses. Uh, this is a, a sort of a victory message that Moses is singing to the people. Uh, also, some warnings. But in verse four, he says this: "He is the Rock, talking about our God. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity." just and right you know he is he is a he is a god he is our god and he's a god of truth without iniquity he's just and right but i think it's interesting he is a rock he is he is a rock and his work is perfect and all his ways are judgment everything is 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 a is he's a, he discerns it and he's he's watching over it and he's and he's making decisions about the details of things going on and it's perfect every time so so you know why why have fear when we have a rock when we have the lord jesus christ we have god in our life who is uh, who makes you know makes our way as you know scriptures talk about making our way straight uh go over to first thessalonians chapter two. First thessalonians two a preliminary verse just to remind ourselves uh of uh, a couple things but uh again faith is uh, is is the answer to uh, to fear um, it is uh, the faith, you know, the, the, the building of faith in our life produces hope. And hope is uh, is that, you know, being able to look forward and a confident expectation that this sort of, uh, sort of trumps the fear in our lives. Uh, but here in First Thessalonians 2, verse 13, faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. But faith, in, you know, is built with the word of God. And here it talks about here in verse 13, talking about the word of God that works in our life. First Thessalonians two thirteen. We read this last time as well. For this cause also we th uh, thank we God without ceasing, because when we received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but it as is is in truth, the word of God, which notice effectually worketh also you in you that what believe right. So, you know the word of God and your faith come together to produce something. <laughs> change it affect an effect it effectually worketh in each and every one of us right so god's word and this way you know and i don't think i have to tell you guys this but uh, god's word is the key and then our faith is how we interact with that and that's where romans 5 and so we're going to be actually spending most of our time in romans 5 today so uh go ahead and turn yourself uh, turn you know, not turn yourself turn your bible pages in your bible to romans chapter 5 As um, as I shared last time, um, that your know, faith, you know, again, faith is, is you know, is the Book of Hebrews talks about is it's the it, it it's the substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things uh, not seen. Uh, it is it's what it what makes things real in our life. And faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. And here we have some things that in Romans chapter five that that faith. Is what I what I I sort of say is is an actuator. It makes the things of God um, real in our life. It actually allows us to access and and bring into our life the things that God has in store for each and every one of us. So it takes faith, and we know from Hebrews eleven six also that you know that without faith it's impossible to please God because you got to believe that He is and that He's rewarded of them that diligently seek uh, seek Him. So, you know, God, you know, if we want to please God, we have that faith. And actually, faith is required for really everything. So here in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, therefore, being justified by faith, okay, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that verse, the verse starts with the word therefore. And when you see the word therefore, you want to see why it's therefore. And that is, you know, the reason is because what's happened before. And so, you know, Paul explains in Romans, you know, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that you know the issue is you know this issue of justification by faith and you know without works right uh, verse uh, five of Romans four right across the page but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the godly his faith is counted for righteousness you go to the end of the chapter 
uh, for you go to verse four, uh, 24 it says, but for, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead, there's, there's your faith. You got to believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for what? Our justification. Therefore, being justified by faith. So there's a, that's a conclusion. All right. We, you know, because of that situation, because we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. We're in a new, we're in a new position. And we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So we have this peace. So we're, we're, we have peace. We're in a new, we're in a new situation. We went from a place. We went. You know, we're on the winning side now. We're on God's side now. So we have peace with God. We're not. You know, we're not in between God. We're we're on a, we're on the on the right side. We're on the correct side now. But in verse two, because of that, that new standing, because we have peace with God, okay, and we're justified by faith. It says here, with the Lord, because, you know, because of this relationship we have with Christ, verse two, by whom, Lord Jesus Christ, also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. And I'm going to stop right there because I want to just look at those three. That, that verse a little more, the, the verse a little, there's two verses a little more there. It says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. The idea is by, you know, in, because of Jesus Christ, we have access, but how do we have access? We have access by faith, right? And and we have access into the grace, the favor of, the, uh, of God. And notice that we stand in it. Right. So it surrounds us. All right. We're standing in it. It's like standing in a lake. All right. There's grace everywhere. All right. It's uh, we stand in the grace of God and we access that grace by faith. You got to, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to believe. You got to believe and know that God is good, that God is, that God is gracious, you know, that God is who he is and that you have a relationship with God. That's a grace relationship, right? He is, he is, you know, showering grace upon each of us. But you got to believe it. You got, you know, it. it you got to take it and mix it with faith. You know, want to make it uh, real in our life. That's why God says you got to believe that He is, you know, and that you know He He wants to give. He wants to reward each and every one of you that diligently seeks Him. Hebrews eleven six and faith makes it real, right? It's the it's, it makes it substantial. So that faith makes God's grace real in your life. You know, salvation is by grace. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. You got to believe that, right? You got to believe in God's grace. And that's the problem that many in the, you know, most probably in the world have, right? They're looking for something else other than grace to somehow to substantiate their relationship with God. And what God says, it's it's by you know it's by faith, you know by God's grace that we that we we come to know Him. But our relationship, our living relationship now as children of God, okay, because we're justified by faith. So we're talking the believers, the children of God, that that we we need to learn to tap into God's grace, that, you know God's favor. Now. It's interesting here because in you know the rest of that verse, verse two, it says, "By whom also we have access by faith in this grace where we stand." And then there's two other things here, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That word "rejoice" is interesting. It's the word uh, "ka." I'll try to pronounce it right. "Kahami," right? Uh, and uh, it's sort of "kahami." So it's uh, it, the word is translated elsewhere. In fact, two other times in this passage. Uh, is something else. It's 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 the idea of rejoice, and it's a different type. It's a it's a it also means to boast. It also means the glory. All right. It's it's translated that way, but it's the idea of just a boasting, rejoicing. All right. So it's like it, what it sort of explodes out of us. All right. It's an it's an, it's a rejoicing in hope of the glory of God. Right. So that faith act, lets us access into that grace and that grace where we stand. You know. So we stand in that grace. And we also can rejoice. We can boast in hope that that confident expectation of what God has in store for every believer, uh, that glory. Okay, so we can boast in that. Right now, that seems, you know, very acceptable, very understandable 
Because, you know, if we're standing, you know, we're, we're justified by faith and it's all about grace. We stand in that grace. We're in God's favor. You know, it's obvious we can rejoice. We can boast. We can glory in the hope that what God has in store for every believer. But verse three is interesting because it sort of gives a little twist. It says, and not only so, you know, but there's something else, guys, that's important here. We, but we glory in tribulations also. That's an addition to those two things, which the you know, first two are like, okay, wow, okay, I can understand that. We have, we have access into God's grace, and and God loves me, and He's caring for me, and and you know He's watching over me, and and He's you know He's on my side. It's Romans chapter eight. Uh, we'll probably look at that next week. We'll talk about that. You know, uh, He's He's for us, and all those things, and we can rejoice in all that God has in store. You know, we have a new body in store. We have you know this this world is not our home. We've been delivered from the power of darkness. We've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And we are, you know, we are God's children, you know, and as you know, children, and we have an inheritance. I mean, it's just all the, you know, we, we, we rejoice in that hope. We can boast and we can talk about it and share it, right? But verse three, you know, this time we're talking about right now where things are, there's, it's difficulties and heartaches and troubles, which, by the way, is all the time. It's just, this is really, really, you know, pronounced in what's happening. It's very different. But what God says, or what Paul says here, and God says, is that not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Guess what that word glory is there? That word glory there is the exact same word rejoice. It's kahame. It means we can boast in tribulations. We can rejoice in tribulations. That seems crazy. It seems very different than what would be common experience. And the rest of the ver the next couple of verses sort of explain that. In fact, I really think the whole chapter really talk is really uh, keyed on that to some extent. We can rejoice in tribulations. We can boast in them, right? Because why? Well, we, well, because they they do something. They do something for us, right? It says here. It says that knowing that, and so this, you know, the next two verses sort of explain it. Knowing. That tribulation worketh patience, right? And patience, experience, and experience hope, and ex and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which give it, is given unto us. You know, it's the, the 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 reason is is because well, first it produces something, right? But really, it goes back to grace, right? Look, Paul says, hold your place right there. Go to Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Chapter 12. Well, how is it or why is it or, you know, does it even make sense? How does it make sense that we can glory in tribulations, that we can boast in them, we can rejoice in them? Well, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 that he learned something, all right? In fact, God told him something, and then because of that, he understood something as well. 2 Corinthians 12, we have a relationship, right? We stand in grace. And so when we're in tribulations... They're not just things, they're not things pulling at us. It's not something coming from God that's sort of tearing us down. It's something that God says can be quite beneficial, right? So in 2 Corinthians 12, verse uh, 8, you know, verse 7, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Uh, he prayed about it, uh, it says three times. I know when I have a thorn in the flesh, I seem to pray about it a lot more. Uh, mainly because Paul got an answer after three times. If I got an answer after three times, I'd stop praying about it too. But, you know, but anyways, in verse eight, it says, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. But verse nine, and he said unto me, this is what God says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Paul, you are standing in grace, right? You need to access this by faith. You need to see this, you know, see it this from my perspective, right? And here's what God says, for my strength, is made perfect in weakness. You know, in this period of time, God's strength is being made perfect in weakness. There's a lot of things we cannot do today because of what's going on around us. But we could still, God's strength could be demonstrated in that, right? And so Paul says, here's my conclusion. He says, I'm going to boast. I'm going to rejoice in my tribulations. He said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Okay. You know, I didn't look at that word glory there. I should check it out. It might be kahame. I, and Pastor, you can look that up while we're here and get, you know, throw that back in there if you want. I'd rather glory in my infirmities that the power, because when I'm in, when I'm glorying, I'm boasting in those things, the power of Christ 
may rest upon me. Because when I'm, he says there, there, you know, he says when I'm weak, then I am strong, right? That's what he says at the end of verse 10. He says, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, all those tribulations. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. You know, being strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We're told that elsewhere, right? Be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Be strong in his grace, right? It takes, but it takes, we access that though by faith. Okay. It takes, you know, we have, we access it by faith. You know, Paul said over in Philippians 3, uh, well, turn there. We'll go ahead and turn to Philippians 3. Philippians 3, verse 10. Here's something that Paul really had a, had a prayerful, prayerful part of his life, right? This is, this is his driving desire, okay, in verse 10. And, you know, this is not like at the early stages of his salvation. This is, you know, he's been saved for a number of years, you know, 30 years now. Verse 10 it says, that I may know him, talking about Jesus Christ, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection. And by the way, you're going to see that concept, that idea in Romans chapter 5. Yeah, you're going to see that concept, that idea in Romans chapter 8. Okay, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The, the power that raised Christ from the dead is accessible to each and every one of us by faith. Ephesians 1 talks about, in Ephesians 3, and Paul's prayer is talking about the power that works in us, and it's a resurrection power that takes dead things and brings them to life. That's what resurrection power does. It can take a, a, a lost soul that's dead and give them new life, right, through Jesus Christ our Lord, right, through eternal life. It can take a, a life that's sleeping, a Christian's life who's, who's away from God, Okay, and and running after their flesh and are dead to the things of God and can renew that person and bring them to life and a living life with with Jesus Christ. It can take each and every one of us that is feeling like, man, it's just, you know, things are falling apart and let us see the the positive things and the good things that God is doing and find victory as we sing in the song in Jesus. Right. And that resurrection power. But notice what verse 10 goes on to say is that I may know him, that I may know the power of his resurrection, and that I may know the fellowship of his sufferings. You know, that I may know the fellowship, to be in the same boat together, you know, to experience the fellowship of his sufferings, to, to have those difficulties become part of me that Christ went through. Why? Well, because it says they're being, the result of things, being made conformable unto his death, you know, being transformed into that, that same, that, that, that same sort of experience. Paul says over in Philippians, well, this is Philippians here, right? In Philippians 2, he talks about in verse 8, if you just hold your place there, I know I have your holding order to place here. Um, you're at home, you got a table, you can do this, right? And it's Philippians uh, 2, hold your place in Philippians 3 there. Philippians 2, verse 5 through 8, you know, says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. But in verse 8, it says this, okay, and being found in fashion as a man, it's talking about Jesus Christ, right? He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, right? Verse nine, 7 says, but he made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Paul's talking about in Philippians 3, when it says they're being made conformable to his death, it's talking about that I'm gonna I'm gonna be transformed that same sort of thinking. It's an issue of a submissive thinking, and a and a and a mindset of humility, where God is who we ought to be in our life. You know that that God is 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 not just the 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 center of our life, or He's not necessarily the goal of our life. He's the everything of our life. And that's what in verse 11 says this of Philippians 3. I'll read 10 and 3, 11 again together. Mm -hmm. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death, mm -hmm. if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. 
Okay. What does that mean? All right. Well, he, Paul says, I want to have in my life right now what it will be like when I'm raised, when I have that, um, and when I have that, when I've, I'm going to attain under the resurrection. You know, what does it mean when Christ comes back and we have this resurrection, the rapture we talk about? Well, our position in Christ will become our experience in Christ. That is, every day we will be righteous and holy, and we will be who we ought to be. That our old flesh, that gives us fear and worry and pulls at us and, and drags us and takes us places we don't want to go. Right? That old flesh is left behind. And so what Paul is praying or is talking about here in verses 10 and 11 of Philippians is that, you know, I want what I'm going to have in eternity future when I'm with the Lord right now. And the way I can do that is I need a I need to know Christ more. All right. Okay. I need to experience Christ more. I need the power of his resurrection. I need to tap in to that grace. So I'm gonna have to walk by faith. I need God, you know, I need to I need to bathe my mind. I'm gonna think on these things. You know, Paul in Philippians 4, think on these things, you know. Um uh, you know, the, the good things and the holy things and the righteous things and virtuous things, those things. I need to make that my life. Okay? And I need to experience what it means to be living a life of faith. All right. I need to, I need to experience Christ in my life. And Christ means, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go through life uh, in, in humility and you don't force that. It's a, that's a fruit that God's producing in your life. Right. But I'm, make, I'm being made conform. I'm being, I mean, it's producing in that my life that I'm going to become more some, uh, a servant of the Lord and that I'm going to be um, uh, more loving and more humble as, as God produces those things. All right. Go back to Romans chapter five. <clears throat> Romans chapter five. So, so how can we have this? Yes. I checked that out. Second Corinthians 12, 9. <laughs> I rather worry my infirmities. That's the same word in Romans 5, 3, 2, and 10 or 11. Right. right. It's Kahame. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 10. You just ruined my thunder in chapter 10, Stuart. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 10 there. And anyways, yeah, so it's it's this, you know, it's, Paul says we can boast in those things. I mean, there's other reasons too, and it's not enough, you know, we don't have enough time in this study, but like, you know, Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter. Four talking about like, for our light afflictions, which which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. There's an eternal reward for that. That boasting in, in it, our infirmities and our tribulations and and rejoicing those things is that they have eternal benefit, right? That's why Paul says, or you know, well, not Paul, the writer of Hebrews says in in, in verse six of chapter eleven that God's does you know you know how we please God is is we need to believe it is and it is a rewarder. Of him that diligently seeks him. If you diligently seek the Lord, you will have tribulation. You will have difficulties in this world. This world doesn't like that. All right. All right. But what we, you know, what the, what the issue is, we can rejoice in it because that, that, uh, those, those, um, those, there's a, there's a, there's a, those things happen in our life, not because God is angry at us, because we are serving the Lord. You know, it's about it's about what God's strength becomes more, or, or His strength and His power becomes more evident in our life, and we experience God more in our life. And so, even though you know we're experiencing His grace, that's what we're doing, right? Because we're we're accessing the grace and where we stand. Now, let's go on and just read some more of chapter five, and and look at some things here. So, in verse three again, it says, "Not only so, but we glory in tribulations also." Right? And I think that really. Um, the rest of the passage really deals with this issue of we're standing in grace and there are tribulations and difficulties. Okay, so, so we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, right? Now, that patience is sort of this, uh, uh, the word there has the idea of a, a cheerful, hopeful endurance, right? And uh, you know, every, every time I think about uh, patience, it doesn't seem to be cheerful, but uh, that's that, that's what the, the scripture is talking about there. The, that there, it's an idea of being sort of a steadfast waiting. You know, uh, back in um, uh, Psalm, uh, well, just go ahead. Let's look at two person, uh, two things here. So let's go to Exodus 14. I think of this verse when I when I um, 
<clears throat> when, I, uh, when I think about patience or the idea of it waiting, um, and it's something, you know, it's, the, it's this in, endurance and waiting and basically just, you know, letting God do what he needs to do. All right. So, and, um, and, and it, it'll, it'll happen. Right. So in verse 13 of Exodus 14, uh, here's Israel up against, you know, uh, Pharaoh on one side and the Red Sea on the other side. And Moses says unto the people in verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, fear you not. Don't fear guys. All right. Okay. Be patient here. I mean, in the, in the, it's sort of like what Paul's saying over in the, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's, it's similar. But he says this, stand still and see, all right, the salvation of the Lord. You know, in our life, you know, so, you know, Paul, you know, Moses tells the people, you know, don't fear. You just need to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Patience is like that, all right? And go to Psalm 27, and I'll, then we'll go back to Romans 5. But in Psalm 27... You need to let me know what time penny. You need to snap your fingers eventually, all right? Okay. <laughs> Psalm 27. We're good. Uh, verse 14. It says, uh, uh, it says, wait on the Lord, right? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. It's sort of don't fear, you know, be, be courageous. Stand there. You know, being you know, courageous means you're standing there, even though things are all going all over the place. Stand in that eye of the storm, I guess, right? And it says, and he will strengthen thine heart. You know, wait, I say, on the Lord. You know, Psalm says, wait on the Lord. You know, be patient, right? And so that's what, so like back in Romans chapter 5, what happens is there is a structure or there is a, there's a mechanism of how that patience grows in our life, that we can learn to wait on the Lord, that we can stand still and, and see, watch, you know, what God is going to do, okay? And that's what there's sort of a little description of that here in, in Romans uh, chapter 5. It says, so, it says, you know, we glory in tribulations. We can boast in those because we have this knowledge, all right? Knowing the tribulation worketh patience. You know, those difficulties of life, when we stand still, when we wait on the Lord, what we find is that we come out the other side, right? We endure them confidently knowing, you know, well, that, you know, that things are going, you know, that God, you know, we, we see God's hand, right? As we have see God's hand, it says, and so it goes on to say, knowing the tribulation worketh patience, and patience, and you got to throw the word in, worketh experience, and experience worketh hope. It produces those things, right? But that patience, as we see, as we, as we stand still and see, we get some experience with that, all right? What experience is, is the idea that we get a little bit of practice with it, right? All right, and we begin to, 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 um, to realize, you know, as we're going through it, as is, you know, each time it gets easier. Maybe something I got. Think of it that way, right? You know, when you ex when you do something over and over and over again, it gets easier. Well, it gets easier to stand still, right, and just watch and see what God's going to do, right? And then that experience then produces hope. And what that is, so like experience is sort of like you know, patience is sort of okay. I got to get through this. Experience is oh, I've been through this before, right? And then hope is this that something starts to happen and you already know that god's got in got in charge of it right they're already god's going to get through us so it's moving to like okay I, i've done this before i've done this before but now i'm looking through with a sort of a, uh, looking forward expectantly to see what god's going to do all right and then what that hope does is that hope then makes a change in us that's even further and said so, and hope maketh not ashamed right it make you know what hope does is we begin to see you know that that God's oh, we know God's got this right God's gonna you know we're gonna because you know because we're, we're standing in God's grace it's not you know all these turmoils all these difficulties all these problems are not because God's anger with me because wow I can God's strength is being made you know being evident in me I, I'm I'm experiencing God's you know grace in these things. But then I can be, then what produces in me is I'm not ashamed, okay? Why? Well, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. What hope does is enables us to go beyond. The next step is to go beyond 
hope, which is love, right? That is love. You know, by the way, I don't know if you saw there's faith and there's hope and there's love, right? In that. And the greatest of those three is 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 love. And it's greatest because it's really a couple of different reasons. One, it's the one that reaches beyond herself, but it's also the greatest because it's the you know, it's it's a production. You know, faith is the foundation. Hope gets, you know, you know, you begin to hope uh, gives you victory in your own life over the difficulties and the 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 hard hard things of life. And then love is I'm going to help somebody else get to those difficulties and hard hardships and things, right? Because I've experienced God's grace and I've experienced, you know, I've walked by faith in those things and I've accessed those things. I can help others do those things, right? Anyway, so that that uh, that uh, that 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 final culmination of the Holy Spirit that's given to us, producing love in our life, because it's shed abroad in our hearts, right? And hope makes us not ashamed. We're we're able to tell others and share with others to to get in the battle and be part of uh, you know those tribulations and difficulties and and hard things that that are going on there. All right. So we so we're standing in this grace, right? So so Paul is sort of outlined real quick here. Well, I haven't done it real quick, but Paul's written it pretty quick. That we are we are, have access in this grace, and because of that grace, we can rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Because of grace, we can glory in tribulations, and we know those tribulations produce something valuable, and we have and we have love. Now, verse six. I think verses six through eleven are an explanation really of, you know, this, why can we glory in, in tribulations? Right. And it, it has to do with this grace again. All right. So first, uh, so verse six is, so we sort of step back because the word four starts with four there. Right. So for when we were, it's an explanation. It's sort of like, therefore, except it's, you know, you know, this stuff that just happened in verses two, you know, one to five. Okay. Now there's an explanation of it for, when we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You know, you know, when we had no strength, okay, now we have strength in the Lord, right? We are standing in God's grace, but at one time, none of us, okay? For when we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And then there's a sort of an <clears throat> explanation for scarcely for a righteous man will one, will, one, will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he did it when well, we were nothing. We, we were we were enemies, right? But God commended his love towards us, and that while we were at sinners, Christ died for us. So Paul's establishing a truth that, you know what, Christ died for us when we were really enemies on the other side, right? He he loved us so much then while we were enemies. And the idea is, well, guys, now that you're a child of God, man, that love should be even more real, Right. We should, you know, we should, we should be able to experience. I mean, God's love is even more real to me. It's, it's just as real to everyone. But for a believer, it should be something that we can feel or know, right? The ungodly don't know it, okay? But until they believe, right? Until they have faith, right? Verse 9 says this, much more. Hey, something else, guys. In addition to that, right? In addition to Christ dying for your sins and, and taking care of while you were just a sinner, Okay, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You now we have a future tense salvation here, right? That is, we're saved past tense, and now we have, you know, we could we could spend some time looking at the three tenses of salvation or uh, justification, sanctification, and glorification, those things. Um, and I was going to think, I thought I might do that, but I'm not gonna have time. But, anyways, anyways, the we're saved from wrath through him. We're, we have a new, we have a new position, right? There's no more wrath from God. We're not, you know, so we're in grace guys. It's what it's talking about. And it says here for explain that for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And next week I'm going to talk about that, that, that portion saved by his life. Right. Uh, we may get a little bit today, but I'm not sure. But anyways, the we shall you know so the explanation of you know verse nine is that well we've been reconciled we were in one state okay Christ's death took us and put us in another position all right and and we are and we are saved by his life okay that is not talking about his physical life when he 
walked on the earth. This is, you know, he's raised from the dead, all right? And this saved by his life, can you can you can look at it in relationship? To, okay, yes, he died for me. His, you know, Romans six twenty three for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right, uh, Romans uh, um, chapter six. You know, we're we've been identified in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in Romans six. Right, we. We, uh, you know, we're, we're tapped in. That life saves us, right? For by grace, saved through faith, not ourselves. It's a gift of God, not a worse than any should boast. God gives it as a gift. It's a gift of eternal life, right? But this verse, and then we also have, you know, the fact that, you know, we're going we're gonna to be with him in the future as well. Um, Colossians 3, uh, verse 1 through 4. Right? If you then be risen with Christ, uh, seek those things that are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above, not on things in the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with God. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall also appear with him in glory. We're going to, you know, he's our life, and you're going to appear with him in glory, right? So there's there's a future aspect of that. But the main aspect of this is talking about right now, in this moment of time, okay, in, our, in our living life, this mortal life that we're in at this moment, that we are saved by Christ's life. He's he's a risen Savior. He's alive today. Okay, you know, salvation. Bang. It's you know that's you know that's how it starts. All right. It ends with us being in His presence. But in between the points, Christ is still here. He is still with us. He is still working in us. He Paul says in Galatians chapter two verse twenty, "I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me." And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. His life is active, you know, transforming me to gain, you know, give, me, give me victory, right? So look at verse 9 again. For much more than being justified by his blood, Romans chapter 5, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Okay? For why? Well, because when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. We were, you know, put in a new standing. Much more, all right, so more than that, being reconciled now in this new standing, okay, we're in this new relationship. We're a child of God. We're in His family. We are. We are. You know, we have His Holy Spirit within us, and and we're standing in His grace. Okay, we shall be saved by His life, right? We're going. You know, His. His. We're, we're going saved to the difficulties and the heartaches and the tribulations of this day. Paul says, "Well, God says, my grace is sufficient for thee." Right, verse eleven, verse eleven, okay. and not only so. This is something in further addition, right? In further addition. So we have, you know, verse three says, and not only so, we glory in tribulations. This is an additional piece. In verse nine, much more than that's an additional piece, and then verse you know ten says much more, something more, and then Paul says in verse eleven, and not only so. This is something, an, another truth it says, but we also joy, kahame, kahame, uh, we joy, we boast, rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. All right, that word, that word atonement, it's the only place time that word aton atonement is translated in the New Testament that way. I think it's a, it's a, it's a mis, you know, it's a mis summative truth of grace. Nobody wants to call it atonement. Because atonement is tied very um, tightly to Israel, right? But Paul says here, but we have now received something. And this is in addition to the other things going on. Some people want to make that reconciliation. But I don't know, that, that bothers me because it's not, it's, it, it, it's not in addition to. The other thing is that it's missing the truth of the passage, which is the explanation of of what that means which is verses 12 through 21 what that atonement is is we that we are that grace reigns today that 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 grace is everything today think about what the atonement did for israel back you know this by the way this is the body of christ has this all right so what what did israel what did israel have get on the day of atonement well they got another year of grace you know, they got another opportunity to, to be called God's people. They got another opportunity to be used of God. They got another opportunity to worship God, to be called, you know, to be to be part of God's plan and purpose. 
in a positive way. They got, you know, they, they were used of God, all right? That day of atonement, when that high priest went in and he, and he offered that sacrifice for the people, for the sins of the people, yet it brought them into a, you know, a, pos a new position. And yes, I understand why you know, reconciliation is a new position, a new, a new place. But this word is more than that, right? It's, it's because it's, it's more than just that, that, that reconciliation because that's what Paul said we already have. We're in a new place and we're saved by his life. But what Paul's saying is that today we now have received atonement. You know what? Every member of the body of Christ has access. Every member of the body of Christ is in a, in a, in a position of, of, of good standing, right? We have access. We have peace. This is what the day of atonement is. We, we are, you know, there's, there's a, ju you know, justified, you know, Satan couldn't understand how God could look at Israel and say they're righteous and his people, right? Well, because God gave them, you know, some, you know, temp, you know, sort of a, 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 a he justified them for another year. It's not justification for his soul salvation, but he basically, I'm, they're, they're my people. He said, I'm going to separate them unto me because they're my holy people, right? Uh, when Israel finally does get the atonement, they'll have the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, they'll be, you know, they'll be uh, great, you know. Anyways, this grace abounds, right, today. We now have received that, that position. The body of Christ has this position, not promised from the Old Testament. It's just what we have. Right, we have this 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 position where we stand in grace, and that grace reigns today. What Paul says in Romans chapter five verse twenty it says, "Moreover, the law entered Romans five twenty that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord." Today, grace reigns. Why don't we need to fear? Because, well, fear, you know, is, you know, issue, well, it's, we're going to understand that fear is something that is, get re, is replaced by faith when you realize that we stand in grace. Today, in this dispensation of the grace of God, grace reigns, right? And there's no, there, is, there is no worry or fear or, 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 or difficulties of this life that can separate you from God. Romans chapter 8 is going to talk about that uh, uh, in great detail about those things, you know, so today again, so like, you know, I, th I mean, for me, when I look at Romans chapter five, I see three, you know, three major portions to it here. All right. So like verse six explains for six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 and 11 explain why tribulations, we can glory in tribulations. Right. Right. Because, well, cause we're in a new position, new standing and grace reigns. And then Paul explains what that, you know, we have now received this new standing, okay, uh, in with God, and that's new standing is this age we stand in. It's a, it's a, this age of grace uh, where we've 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 re we've received it. We've now received it. You know, uh, there's a lot of passage. Paul talks. You know, he uses that phrase, "but now" a bunch of times. Well, while we have now received this new standing for every child of God, we stand in His grace in his love, in his power, and all that he is. You know, we are a special people, you know. Um, in uh, I, Penny, clap your fingers, but that means I get one more verse. All right, it's Mark here. So go to Titus uh, chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. You know, in verse 13 of Titus 2, it says, it says, looking for that blessed hope. You know, we're, we're you know, that this hope, this, the, the thing, the, the, you know, the, the rapture is what's being referred to here. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Looking, looking and waiting and, and, and watching, you know, sort of looking out the window, uh, you know, to, to see what's going to come. I mean, uh, verse 14, but notice what, you know, this, you know, here's Christ who's going to appear for us. But notice what it says about Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Praise the Lord. That he, he's taken care of all our sin, but also, notice this, and purify <clears throat> unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Purify, to, 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 to bring into a position of, of new standing and, and good standing and righteous standing and holy standing, a peculiar people, special people, right? And they have this particular characteristic, zealous of good works. You know, Christ died for two reasons, it says there, to take care of our sin, but also for the fact to have a peculiar people, the body of Christ, 
that that would be zealous of good works. All right. That takes walking by faith. It becomes it, it takes standing in the God's, you know, accessing God's grace, right? Uh, in the midst of difficulties and struggles and tribulations and problems and seeing them for what they really are, or something that brings us closer to him, think, seeing that they are give, give us opportunities, be, seeing them that we are on, you know, we're in the same boat. We're fellowshipping in, in, in the same things of, that Christ uh, had, had, had suffered, that, that we're being changed ourselves into his image. It says, uh, you know, from, uh, from glory to glory. By the Holy Spirit, we're being changed into into His in, into His uh, into His nature. We're we're being changed, and, and and we're getting to know Him more. These difficulties are something not to fear, but are something that we should just trust and and see and access. And when we're struggling and having difficulty, we need to just you know access that grace. Understand what's that mean? Well, understand that God's for you, that He's with you, that He's you know He's in you. All right, and he's and he loves you, and there's nothing to fear, no matter what happens in this life. God, you know, Jesus Christ uh, is the answer to it all, and our faith in that grace will get us through it. That's, that's what Paul said. You know, what Christ said to Paul, "My grace is sufficient for thee." Right? Of course, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul said, "Man, if that's what it is, if that's what it takes." You know what? I'm going to glory in those tribulations. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to boast in them. I'm going to rejoice in those things, those infirmities and those problems, difficulties, because they make me better in my relationship with the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your word. We thank you for just uh, all you are. Just we pray, Lord, that that we just might just by faith, Lord, access this grace. The, your unmerited favor, Lord, not, not only saves us, Lord, but also carries us through each day. And, Lord, we know that we'll stand in your presence just because of grace. Nothing that we've done, nothing we've earned, but, Lord, all because of your amazing grace. We thank you, Lord, for just your love and your blessings and all that you are. Thank you for this day, and we just pray for this class, Lord, to continue to bless each and every one. Thank you for those who were able to be out with us this morning. Pray, Lord, for those that could not. Pray, Lord, for the rest of our congregation, Lord. Just pray for the service that will follow here with Pastor as he presents on Facebook here. Just pray, Lord, for just your hand upon that service and about the, those that will listen and watch. And just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit might touch each and every one. And we pray these things, Lord God, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.